Welcome back, everybody, to another wonderful day of Fusion 360. We're going to be talking about making corners. That's it. Just how do you make a corner? Because when you're in this environment, the sculpt environment, you're going to find that making an actual square, just the simplest thing that should be happening, is not possible. Let me show you what I mean. If I go back to the model environment and I create just a square here, you can do it with sketching, but I'll just do it the very basic default way. And I make square a square about the same size, 50 by 50 by, what it is, is 30, 20. Okay. And then I go back to the sculpt environment right here, create form. Don't show me this again. Uh, you can see that this is all gone here. Let me just delete this. Now I'll go back. So as I do this, you're going to see a 50 by 50 supposed to be a square. It says box, but it's not. And in here, you can't see it anymore because it's a different type of different type of entity here. They're very sharp corners. So if you want to do the same thing in the sculpting environment, which again is a free form, you can do lots of things you can't do in the model environment. You have to take a few things into, into your mind. First, these corners here, think of it as being stretched out. So it's this sort of sculpting environment. I'm saying that too much lately. It's more like a clay form, pull and push and maneuvering material inside the object around it. So it's pulling and stretching it, which means that it averages between all the adjacent panels. If I want to think about this single line here, this line, what's happening is it's averaging between here and here, even here at the point, and over here and here at the point where they meet. So how am I going to get a straight corner? The first way that people usually do it is they do this called crease. And creasing, if I add it to my toolbar here, creasing, when you select it, it shows you all the optional entities. So if I had more boxes, if I had a box over here, if I hit crease, it would show me all of them. And then you select the edges you want to crease. And what creasing does is it causes the stress points, the stress pull and push from each panel to, to not work the same way as it used to. It still does pull and push, but it doesn't work the same way. And you can see how it averages into that smooth edge. If I crease all of these, and I zoom back, crease, 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 I'm creasing all of these edges here. Now look at this. Because I've creased it, and I've given Fusion a good way to manage the averaging between the panels, now this panel here and these panels are can be squared. That's one way to think about getting sharp corners. What if you don't want 90 degree really sharp corners like this? Because if I took this panel and I pulled it up or I pulled it back, it's still wanting to be 90 degrees. Creasing wants to be 90 degrees. What if you don't? What if you want to actually create close to 90 degrees, but still have a smooth edge. Another way you can think about it is you have beveling. And beveling, you have fillet in the regular uh, model environment. Fillet over here is called a chamfer. This is cha beveling is chamfer, where you're taking an angle. Uh, let me go forward again. And you are basically cutting an angle across here. So let me, if I show you here, bevel, this and this, I'm going to pull it shorter, not too much of a bevel, bevel. So what it's done is it's separated that single corner, that single line, and it's split it into two, and it's averaged between them. It is an even bevel. If I do it again, you can choose how far it bevels, and you can choose the number of segments that it does bevel. So if I let's say I do four, four bevels, it adds four. And it gives me the option, just like anything else, to stretch it out, pull it, like any other part. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is really handy when you're just molding the object, and this 
Honestly, this way should be the most common. This is what you should do most of the time, is just add more lines. Honestly, add more lines. Not too many, but add more. So here's an example. Let me just select, I'm going to symmetry this thing. Add some symmetry so that it becomes a perfect square all the way around. That means whatever I do to here attaches to all these the exact same way. So if I take this edge here, this, this, and this, and I subdivide it. Now watch what happened. It went from very, very rounded, very averaged, to a little more precise. The more lines I add, this is called subdivide, this tool. If you want to know what it is, it's right here, the third one down. The more lines I add, let me get rid of those. There we go. The more lines I add, the more subdivided it gets. Let me select all of these, every single one, and subdivide again, just to show you. The more lines I add, I'm trying to add even lines across all subdivisions. So you see how it's becoming closer and closer to a sharper edge? You can actually think about it as going to infinity where it's a number that doesn't actually have an ending. A run on decimal. Pi, 3.1416, I think it is, 168. Uh, that is a run on decimal where it runs forever. 3.142 is the average when you round it up. But this is more like a run on decimal. You can keep adding lines forever. It will keep getting more and more precise, but it won't ever reach the crease level where it's exact 90 degrees. So this is really good when you're designing your object and you want a sharp-ish corner. And I say ish because it won't be sharp. It'll be still rounded and averaged like this, but you can add more definition. One last thing to think about is that let's say you have these this number of actual segments, these number of lines, and you pull the lines closer. If I take these lines here, and I pull them closer, this edge will also get sharper. This is the last option, is to just pull the lines closer to each other, pull it in, 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 in. It won't, if you look at this, this corner wants to go past the edge. It wants to fly past this wall here, but it won't because it has this, all these different lines of symmetry holding it back. I can keep going. Oh, now it did. There it goes. There's a limit, I guess. Let me pull it back. So I'll guess to right there. And let's say I take this, oh, this line. I'm holding shift as I click multiple objects. I'm going to do the same thing and pull it up. What I can do is get it quite, quite sharp. And that's one other option, is to pull the lines closer. There's a limit where the fold, you can see the stress where right here how it's shaded you see how it's shaded a bit lighter right here like it's catching the light this is fusion telling you this has been stretched out when you see stuff like this where it's shaded like that and it's not even it's been stretched which will be harder to manipulate the more stretch lines you get so try to keep all your lines nice and clear try to keep avoid stretch lines if you can Sometimes you cannot, and you find it very frustrating to get rid of them, but that's fine. It's okay to have them, but just realize that what these tell you is that whatever object it is in that part that has the shades, the different stretch marks, that's what that means. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.